Hi, I'm Eckhart. I'm from the Adreno Melbourne store. Uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit about free diving in Melbourne. There's some amazing things to see in, Mel in the Melbourne area. Um, some of the highlights for me when I moved here four years ago from South Africa uh, was seeing the, um, the spider crab um, migration that you get in the southern parts of the bay towards our winter months, normally May, June. Um, normally in the kind of like the mid-May it starts. It runs for a very short period, uh, but the spider crabs will stack, you know, literally two meters high, and it's just it's something really cool and magical to see. You'll get the rays cruising straight over it, and uh, they'll they'll pick up some of the spider crabs that have molted and that are really soft. Um, something else that's really cool to see in the southern part of the bay, so kind of Sorrento and further south uh, here in Melbourne is the um, the weedy sea dragons. Um, they're really cool. I'm sure one of the guys will probably pop in a little uh, clip of uh, what a weedy sea dra dragon looks like. Uh, Porty is a very good area for that. So is Flinders. Um, even near the pier, you'll be able to see the weedy sea dragons just cruising around. Um, magical. It's like really shallow water too. Probably, you know, one and a half to about two, three meters is kind of like the depth that you're looking at. And you're just looking for the sand patches in between the weed. Um, and you'll see a little looks like a little piece of weed that's kind of floating um, in the current um, and it'll move in and out but believe it or not those, just, those are the what they look like from from a distance um, another amazing thing to have a look at in Melbourne is the calamari um, breeding season um, and what will happen there is you'll get the calamari breeding in waves they'll come in through uh, you know it might be like two three weeks it's um, that there's just heaps of them in various areas whether it's uh, generally on the southern parts of the bay, but you'll get them further up further north. They'll lay little white eggs that look like little fingers. And uh, when you see those little clusters of, of eggs, uh, that's when you know you're kind of in good uh, um, calamari or squid ground. Um, they are tricky to approach. Um, so what is easier is to either approach them by swimming straight down onto the sand and just being as calm and as still as possible. Try to, you know, obviously look down at the, the ground for a while before you start looking up. And what will happen is that they'll normally move away and kind of start creeping in, but then they'll move away. And at the second time that they start coming in, that's when they start coming in quite a bit closer. And you might actually get some just amazing, if you're going to look at uh, trying to film them, um, that's a really cool opportunity. You can even get uh, quite close to them from the surface by just drifting over them and letting the, the current or even just little flicks with your, your, your fins just pull you over the, the calamari um, as they're breeding. And you can see some amazing things of, of them even laying eggs. Um, and there's some amazing footage that, that you'll find here in, um, on, online and you'll be able to see. Another area that's uh, often not as explored is the back beaches of uh, the Mornington Peninsula or Phillip Island. Um, really amazing structure. Uh, you'll get amazing swim throughs, caves, overhangs, um, and in those caves and cracks, you might even find uh, the odd uh, crayfish. Um, they're hard to find. It's great to have a torch to actually look around. Uh, do be careful when you do do uh, uh, cave uh, swim throughs and things like that, that you're diving with a buddy, uh, that you're swimming through areas where you're sure that you can fit through. Um, try to be uh, safe in that mind, like uh, to try to be safe in that uh, idea when, you, when you're trying to do something that, that, that you might not have done before or a cave that you might not have entered before. Be careful too of currents and swell. Um, the, I've surfed most of my life, and this is what was or when I moved here. I thought I'd understand currents and swell. Uh, Melbourne was one of the places where I, I learned one of my biggest lessons, um, and that being that if there, if you're diving on the back beaches, you're generally doing it on very calm days. You're looking for swell that's under a meter. Um, but if the swell is, if there's any sort of pulse in the swell while you're diving, be aware that that can really drastically change the kind of conditions that you'd be diving in, whether there's uh, strong undercurrents or just currents pulling from the shore, um, or you'll have eddies and, and um, areas where the, the currents are super strong or the waves can jack up really high with, before you even know what's going on. So try and make sure that when you're doing the, the back beaches and free diving the back beaches, whether it's spearfishing or free diving, um, you're mindful that you've got a couple of places where you can um, exit. So try, when you're doing your shore dive, 
Uh, make sure that you assess the situation um, in terms of your entrance, in terms of your exit. Try to make sure that you don't have just one spot that you're aware of that you can actually come out on, but you're aware that you know there's maybe a cove or a, a little bay further down, or maybe to the right there's another little area where you can get out and maybe uh, um, kind of crawl all over the rocks to try and get out.